Hello, my name's Mike M0MSN and uh, welcome to my channel. Um, uh, right, what was I going to do this weekend? Like last weekend, I was hoping to test the spiral um, loop antenna. But unfortunately, it's raining again uh, and it's windy and horrible. Uh, and therefore, uh, because I've got an exposed capacitor on the, uh, on the spiral antenna, I don't really want to try using it in this weather. So instead, what I thought I might do in this uh, video is explain the relationships between harmonics. Um, is that the right word? Yes, I suppose so. I've been asked a question, okay? Why is it that if I've got a two meter antenna, I can also use it on the 70 centimeter band? So I thought I would uh, explain the reasons why. I'm going to draw a couple of examples of, of an antenna. Um, the first one, if you like, will be the old standard dipo, okay? Where we've got the inner core connected to this side and the shield connected to that side. And then it runs off on a very nice piece of coax to our radio, okay? And this is normally a quarter wave. And this side here is a quarter wave. Uh, obviously there's other types of antenna where we've got a ground plane antenna where this is normally a quarter wave and the ground radials, uh, if it's on the ground, can be pretty much any length, but if it's suspended in the air, they're quarter waves as well. Okay. So there's two examples of, of pretty basic antennas. Um, now, if we were to make this one, for the sake of arguments, uh, a half wave dipole, which is what this is, a quarter wave on the two meter band, it will also work perfectly well on the 70 centimeter band. Okay, to explain um, how we can use a two meter antenna on the 70 centimeter band. We first need to resort to a little bit of maths. So apologies for this, but uh, I'm afraid we have to do it. Let me just clear this uh, calculator. First and foremost, we need to know a constant. And the constant we use in the radio world is uh, the speed of light, which happens to be approximately the same speed as radio wave. So we know that the speed of light, or you may not know, but the speed of light is 299,792,000 and so many um, meters per second. I think it's about four, is it four, four, five, four, five, eight, something like that, meters per second. Okay, so Armed with this information, we can now calculate the wavelength of any frequency. And it's done simply by rounding that up to 300. And we'll use a correction factor to bring it back down to this uh, in a moment. Um, but we now have our constant. The constant is 300. Now we can divide our frequency into 300 and we will find our wavelength in meters okay everything here is meters metric scale because we don't use the um, the 12.4 uh, foot band or the 8.4 foot band uh, we use whatever the band is in meters okay so we're going to stick with um, with metric uh, I apologize to my um, or any cousins that I may have that still use the imperial scale uh, but you'll have to um, uh, convert it afterwards, perhaps, if you want to follow this. Um, okay, so our 300 is our constant. Um, and we know that the middle of the 2 meter band is uh, roughly 145, at least for the UK it is. It goes from 144 through to 146. I know it goes higher in the uh, in America, but we'll use we we'll use what I'm used to, the 145 uh, frequency. So if we divide um, 300, so let's put it in our calculator. 
300. I hope this is probably going to be in in wonderful uh, engineering um, scale. I'll convert it afterwards. Um, divided by 145 uh, equals, yes, so it's 6, 20, 60 over 29. Let's convert that to engineering. Um, 2.06. So it's the actually the 2.06 meter band okay that's the 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 um but of course we just rounded off the two meter band so to make a quarter wave quarter wave antenna for the two uh, meter band we basically divide our 2.06 and we divide that by four so we divide that by four and that will equal yeah, let's put a division sign divided by four uh, so let's do that quickly to get it right. So divide by four um, equals, and again, it's an engineering. So we'll just take that back to proper figures. So it's in meters, you see, you know, it's in minus, so that's millimeters now. Um, so that is 51.7, um, 51.7 millimeters or centimeters i should say 51.7 centimeters or 517 millimeters but uh, which is roughly half a meter okay so that's for the two meter band but why does it work on 70 centimeters well let's get a 70 centimeter frequency and work it out um so we know that we've got a constant of 300 again. And let's use um, 433, which is the 70 centimetre band, or part of it at least. So let's quickly um, work out that. And we'll find out our frequencies and our wavelength again. I know this is boring, chaps, but please bear with it. So 300 um, divided by 433 equals uh, 300 over four. Yes, that's fine. Um, so let's get the, okay. So it's actually called the 69.2 centimeter band. <laughs> so that's the 70 centimeter band. Um, okay. It's actually called the 69.2 two centimeter band but of course we round it up because we're clever that way but just out of curiosity what's the relationship between 51.7 and 70 centimeters the fifth 69 there isn't it doesn't work does it no but hang on this was a quarter wave so what's the quarter wave of of this the 69.2 or whatever it is so let's divide that by four. So we divide it by four and let's get the, uh, put it into engineering again. Oh, 17.3. So a quarter wave is 17.3 centimeters or 173 uh, millimeters. Hmm, no relationship still. Still don't understand how that, how this can work on this. Ah, but it is, let's times it by three. Oops, let's do that again. So 17.3 times by three equals, take it out of engineering, pay up 51.9. So times three, that's 51.9. So a two meter antenna is actually a three quarter wave on 70 centimeters. Oh, now we're getting a relationship. Okay, the purists are gonna be really upset with me, but for, for ease of understanding, I'm gonna draw a quick graph. This is our antenna, okay? And I divided the antenna into four to represent quarter wavelengths, okay? So 
I want to draw you a, um, a quick graph. I'm going to be awful. Apologies about this. Okay, I'm trying my hardest to get this. Is pretty good. Okay, that is awful, but it will do. Trying to explain really how uh, impedance works. Um, so at the very end of the antenna, uh, we're going to have an impedance of, I don't know, around 3,200. At the quarter wave point, it's going to be around 50. It actually goes to zero, but we'll worry about that in a moment. And then in the middle again, it's going to be around 300, 200 uh, ohms, 3,200 ohms, and then it drops away again to around about 50, and then back to 3,200 ohms. Okay. And we um, would like to see at the back of our radios the 50 ohm. Okay, and we've got this lovely um, sine wave type curve um, showing uh, our, our ohms as we measure down the length of our antenna. So at the feed point, we actually are seeing 50 ohms because we've got none of that. So we've only got our 50 ohm point. Okay, so if we were to connect our dipo here, we would have 50 ohms between that point and that point, and 50 ohms again between that point and that point. If we were to connect our dipo in the middle on our full wave, we would see 3,200 ohms at our connection point. Okay, and the same as if we've connected it at the end. Yeah, this has had the principle of an end fed half wave. You will see um, the, the full impedance of, of the line. So if this is a quarter wave, and that's a quarter wave, which is what it is, at the midpoint, we will see 3,200 ohms. Not what we want to see for our radio. So we can't make a half wave antenna without a matching um, circuit. But we can make a three quarter wave um, antenna because the impedance comes back down again within respectable parameters for the back of our radio. So this is why you get um, quarter waves and five eighths waves. And it's not quite the five eighth point, but it's a real simple matching circuit to bring a five eighths into the three quarter because a five eighths is electrically a three quarter wavelength antenna, if that makes sense. Uh, so we don't have full wave, we don't have half wave really, we have two quarter waves, gives us a half wave, and or we have three three quarter waves, that gives us a three quarter wave antenna. Again, all for this 50 ohm matching. That being said, if we have a, a 64 um, to 1 or a 49 to 1 um transformer at the end of our cable, we can indeed bring this impedance, which is around the 200 and, uh, sorry, the two, 3,200 ohm mark. Uh, if we divide that by our 64, for instance, it brings it down to 50 ohms. Uh, if we divide it by the 49, it brings it down to around 75, 90 ohms. Again, it's matchable using our ATUs, and that's the principle behind an NFED half wave. But getting back to our, our two meter antenna, why we can use it on two and 70 centimeters is because a quarter wavelength on two meters is a three quarter wavelength on the 70 centimeter band. I hope that uh, is, well, I hope that's understandable. So there you go, possibly the worst explanation you've ever had of how or why a two metre antenna works on 70 centimetre. Uh, but that's all I've got. Um, <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you again on the next one. And hopefully that one will be about the uh, the spiro loop. Cheers for now. Bye bye.